Hey everyone, in today's video I'll be going over how to use 8-point grids for your design systems and in your product design apps. You may have heard of 8-point grids before, they're super helpful when you're working because it helps you have consistency in your work, it helps with a lot of implementation details, and it overall makes the process of design a lot easier, and it leaves out a lot of the guesswork. So today I'll be going over how I personally approach this, and I'll be providing some resources that you can check out in the description below so that you can read up more on how to use 8-point grids, and I'll be making my own post on this on my blog on my website soon as well. Just a quick plug as well, I have launched my Patreon this month, so if you want to get any of my content early or vote on new song ideas or see some of my unfinished songs or even see some of my open source files for design like in Figma, feel free to go ahead and check it out at patreon.com slash shyboytm. I will leave links in the description as usual, and I hope you enjoy. So here in Figma, we'll take a look at the common sizes that you'll use with 8-point grid. Given the fact that it's named 8-point, it's because it uses literally the 8-point system. What you'll have as your metrics are 8, 16, 24, 32, etc, etc. And then it can keep going up past 120, but just wanted to show an example. And then there's a couple in between here that I'm representing with an ellipses. So you'll want to use these for your spacing between all of your elements. Also for when you're choosing sizes for your inputs or your buttons or anything like that, this is what the sizing that you're gonna want to use. So like when I'm building an input, a lot of the times I will make it 24 pixels in height so that I can keep with the theme of eight point grid. So now I will show you some examples of this. So if I'm using an eight point grid here on this, I have two examples here with one without an eight point grid, which I'll get to in a second, and then the one with the eight point grid. So say that you have a sign up screen on your app. All of these elements here you'll see uses an eight point sizing around them. So you'll have 24 above, 16 between them. And typically you're always gonna wanna use 16 on the sides for mobile, just a little tip there. So I always use 16 for the sides. And then between my inputs as well, I'm using 16. As I mentioned, I even use the sizing for my inputs. So this input in this example is 48 in height. So it still keeps with the eight point grid that we spoke about earlier. And even with our labels, we can use an eight point grid. You can do a lot smaller sizing when you need to, um, for example, two or four. I typically try to not use these, but for something like a label, you obviously need it to be very close to the input. So I will use four here and there. Another one that I use commonly is 12. And the reason that these are still okay to use once in a while is because you're still keeping it consistent with an even grid. So if you weren't using an even grid and you were trying to do this on like a 15 or maybe like a nine point grid, you can still do this. As long as you're using some sort of grid, it definitely helps. But using an even grid is much better because of the way that pixel density is rendered on screens. So because we're typically designing for screens, we're going to always want to use even because it'll cut the pixels evenly and render them better than they would without that. Another big reason I like to use eight point grids is because of the consistency and the common language with it. And also it's easier for implementation for developers. So with the consistency in common language, if I'm talking to another designer or we're both working on the same file, we're both going to use the same grid style. So there will be no guesswork in terms of the sizing and spacing that we're using for something. So when we make a bunch of different screens, when we bring them all together, they'll still have the same grid spacing and still feel really well and feel consistent with the sizing and spacing that they're using throughout. So when it comes to implementation for developers, it's kind of the same thing where it's like, you know, I, I'm telling my developer, hey, we need to work on this. This is the spacing that we're using. This is the size that I want between things. And even when I make a mistake, say if I had this and it was one pixel too short, so I have 17 here. If I'm communicating this with my developer, hey, we want to make sure we're always on an eight point grid, which is something that I do at my current job, they're always going to know, okay, if this isn't on the eight point grid, maybe this is a mistake. I need to go and talk to my designers and figure out if that's correct. So that has happened many times at my current full-time job um, when you know we're working fast on a new feature and we need someone to make sure to keep us accountable if we're missing something like that, which our developers typically do. So going over to this example on the right, 
This is a very extreme example, of course, but I tried to make an example where I wasn't using consistent spacing on an eight point grid. So you have 20 and nine, and in between you have 26, and the spacing between them is 12. So if I'm not keeping this consistent and knowing what numbers I always need to use between things, you're going to end up with a lot of inconsistencies that definitely add up. So a product that typically feels really good is going to have the same spacing and same typography elements and using those consistently throughout the app. So you'll end up between having an eight point grid, which feels very on brand and you can have this consistent throughout an entire app. Whereas if you don't have an eight point grid, you're kind of just guessing as to what needs to be put where. And it definitely leads to a lot of inconsistencies. When I was first starting out in product design, I didn't know about the eight point grid. So a lot of the times I was just either guessing as to what it should be because it looked like it felt right or I was trying to use something like a 10 point grid, which can definitely be helpful, but then you're very limited with the amount of sizing that you can use. Whereas with the eight point grid that we discussed, we have a big range of sizing that we can use and we can even use in between ones if we ever need to, like a 12 or a four. Again, I try to not use those very often, but there are instances where you kind of have to. Um, for example, when you're doing labels between inputs, like I mentioned earlier. I also have a couple examples and resources that I want to show you all that I highly recommend that you read outside of this video. It's gonna give you some extra knowledge into how to work with eight point grids. So I wrote this article, Easy Ways to Make Your Product Design Work Better Designed, a couple years ago, and it's on my new website. But if you go down here, I talk about how to use a consistent eight point grid. And you know, you can see keeps you from guessing and eyeballing, helps you work faster and more consistently. And it's a great foundation for quality design work. So that's some of the stuff that we went over, but these two links here, I recommend that you go ahead and take a look at. I will make sure to leave this blog post in the description so you can go ahead and check them out. But there's one by one of my friends, Joel, I uh, used to work with him back in the day. He goes over how to use these elements really well and also has baseline grids and things like that. Um, he does this in Sketch, but a lot of these are very applicable to Figma if you want to work in Figma instead. And then also from the Spec FM network, um, I believe this is by Bryn Jackson, and he also speaks about the eight point grid and talks about you know bringing it from code to mockups and vice versa using the box model, which is actually super helpful um, because this is how HTML and CSS work. Um, so it'll explain how to work with that and even going over the mathematics behind it, which I didn't go into too much, but you know, working at 1x and how to export those for 2x and 3x and why it works so well with the pixel density and pixel fitting that I was speaking about earlier. So I hope that was helpful for you. Um, let me know if you have any questions about the eight point grid. Like I said, go ahead and check out that blog post below and I hope you enjoy. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more and I will see you all next time.